so I did something. I finished watching all of the Daniel Radcliffe movies that are on streaming services. I have a couple TV shows that I need to watch, like David Copperfield, one of the first projects that he ever worked on. And I also have to watch The Simpsons because I know he is in an episode or two of The Simpsons. But I finished all the movies that he's been in that are on streaming services. Now granted, I do have quite a few more Danny Radcliffe films to watch. I just have to buy them. So I'm hoping I'll find them at Goodwill because that's where I buy most of my movies. I'm so cheap. I don't like to buy movies when they're brand new unless they're Harry Potter movies. But anyways, this film that I saw that is like the little checklist to say that I've seen all the Daniel Radcliffe films that are on streaming services is Horns. Horns is a 2014 film. Horns is a film that stars Daniel Radcliffe that I feel like is one of Daniel Radcliffe's most popular post Harry Potter films. The story focuses on this character named Ig and Ig had this girlfriend named Marin, but Marin was murdered and he is trying to find out who killed Marin because everyone is blaming him for Marin's death. So it is somewhat of like a thriller, like crime type story, but there's also a fantasy element that makes it sort of like a little bit like bordering on the horror realm and which is horns, hence the name of the movie. He gets these horns that grow out of his head and these horns give him some powers. I'm not gonna spoil like everything that has to do with the horns, but basically when he's around people and they see the horns, then they confess their sins to him and he can sort of like persuade them to do whatever they want. So it is a very triggering film in case you can't tell because normally when something is in the realm of like thriller and horror there is some triggering things. So the triggering things, I feel like I should stop semi smiling for this. The triggering things in this film are graphic violence. I smiled when I said graphic violence. What am I doing? Okay, graphic violence rape, mentions of suicide, obviously murder, and the F slur is used in there, and yeah. So I think that's everything. So before I get any further in this video, let me clarify because I've been getting comments about this. When I talk about movies on here, I am not doing a film analysis. I like watching movies and I like talking about movies, but I'm no way an expert. I just share my thoughts on movies. And this Dana Radcliffe series is in particular because I love Dana Radcliffe and I'm a super huge Dana Radcliffe fan. So without further ado, let's crack on into the rest of this video. So to start off with, this movie had such a fantastic cast. I feel like all of the actors and actresses in this film were perfectly cast. They are such incredible actors and actresses. They were able to capture their characters so well. Even in the flashback scenes with the kids, sometimes flashback scenes can be a little rough because sometimes child actors aren't as experienced as the adult actors. But I was like, wow, these kids are doing such a great job. And also there is some really famous people in there. So we have Danny Radcliffe, obviously, and he is the most like noticeable and memorable one. But there's two actors that are in the flashbacks, well, two actresses that are pretty popular. So Sabrina Carpenter plays one of the kids in the flashbacks. And I'm not sure about this other actress's name, but you you know Diary of a Wimpy Kid? I feel like everyone had a Diary of a Wimpy Kid phase if you lived in America. So you know the girl in Diary of a Wimpy Kid that has like the braids? So she's not like the love interest, she's sort of like the bully. Yeah, so she is in Horns. She is one of the kids in the flashback scenes. I was like watching the movie and then I saw those two girls. I'm like, I have to figure out who they are. They look so familiar and I ended up figuring them out. I think the story as a whole was very, very disturbing, especially when you got to the twist and stuff of who killed Marin, it got even more disturbing. Some stuff was making me like a little sick to my stomach because it was so disturbing, but I think it was an incredibly well done film. I mean, I'm not normally one to like thrillers, but I really liked the way it got my like heart pumping. And it shocked me because I did not guess the killer, right? I was like trying to figure out my brain, like who's the killer, who's the killer? I'm like, okay, I think it's that guy. And then it'd be like, wait, no, it can't be that guy. And so I was going back and forth and then when the killer was revealed, I was like, I did not expect that at all. I feel like most of the characters in the movie are like morally gray in some sense like none of them are perfect they're all flawed and I think that that's part of what makes this film so cool is that none of them are perfect because in real life we don't have good versus evil we are all a human we have all done bad things and we've all done good things and I think that was sort of shown in this movie with these characters I thought that the actual effects of the horns were done really well I was sort of worried that it would look a little not so cool during parts of the film but it turned out really cool. I really like how they incorporated these fantasy elements to do with the horns but it wasn't super like 
intense, the fantasy element, like it didn't overwhelm the rest of the story. The story is about flawed humans and figuring out a murder. So it's not about the fantasy elements, even though they are in there. This movie really gets people thinking and it will have you thinking for such a long time. I'm still wondering a little bit about the ending and I wanna look up more theories about what people have about the ending. And I also want to look up theories as to where the horns exactly came from. I'm not really sure. It seems like Ig could have been like a representation of Lucifer, you know, the angel, but I'm not 100% sure if there was a deep religious meaning to it or if it was just cool to have powers in there. Like, I want to look that up. Oh, and when I was going through the trigger warnings and content warnings, I forgot to say there's nudity. You see boobs, you see a penis. So it's not necessarily one that you should watch if you're under the age of like 17 because of the nudity. I'm still so impressed with Daniel Radcliffe being able to capture so many different characters in such a unique way. Again, as I've said in previous videos, seriously, every single one of the roles that he takes is different from the other roles that he's taken. None of his characters are the same as each other. He has such a wide variety that he does, and I think that's something that's cool about him being so famous, is that I feel like he can sort of just like select which roles he wants to do more because sometimes when you're not as famous you just take whatever role you can get but i feel like daniel radcliffe has the ability to be more selective about which roles he takes and i think he can really take roles that challenge him as an actor and i find that to be really cool now horns was based on a book by joe hill and i do want to read the book and i definitely will be sharing my thoughts on the book when i read the book in the future i probably won't be reading it by the end of this year because i have such a long list of books i plan to read by the end of the year but i'm really looking forward to reading the book i'm hoping that the horns powers and purpose for being there are explained better in the book because they weren't explained super well in the movie but I still enjoyed the movie. I still thought it was an incredible film. I just feel like there's a couple little things that I would have liked to have explained better and I think the book might have the ability to explain them better. So overall I'd say that Horns is a movie that is worth watching if you can handle triggering subjects. It is not so much like an intense horror film but more in the realm of like thriller. So like thrillers will get your heart pumping but you won't be like staying up having nightmares well horror movies would do that like that's the way I describe the difference but some of the stuff in the movie was so like disturbing that I would say it borders on the horror genre so if you're not a huge horror fan don't be afraid to watch this movie because it is not super scary trust me I hate horror films because I am a scaredy cat but I was fine with this film wasn't too scared also, you know what's creepy? I post about this on my Instagram story, so you may have seen this. It's at the end of the film, at the climax of the film. All of a sudden, this loud, intense music started blasting in my earbuds. And at first, I was like, wow, they really drastically changed the movie in the last, like, ten minutes. But then I paused the movie, and the music was still playing. And it was really weird. It was like my computer became possessed because it took me like an hour to figure out that Spotify had turned on when I was like an hour and 40 minutes into the movie. I'm still like slightly creeped out because I get really paranoid at night and I just don't know why Spotify turned on an hour and 40 minutes into a movie. Like it would have made sense if it turned on like two minutes into the movie because then maybe it was just like warming up and playing but warming up for an hour and 40 minutes something seems off it seems weird really weird i like have suspicions that there's a ghost in my house but i don't know if i believe in ghosts but like there's just some things that don't add up and this is like adding to the list of things that don't add up and it sort of creeped me out a little bit because the movie was like slightly scary and then to have spotify turn on when i was in the middle of the movie i was like is this a ghost? Is this a sign that there's paranormal activity in my house? But anyways, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me if you haven't already. When I am filming this video, Horns is currently available on Netflix, so go ahead and check it out if you're interested in the movie. As I have said, Daniel Radcliffe movies do not stay on streaming services forever. They do rotate out which ones are on each streaming service. So currently Horns is on Netflix, but if you don't watch it soon, it may get off of Netflix or it may go to different streaming service. Also, I do want to note, I did watch the movie Lost in London, which according to IMDb, Daniel Radcliffe is in it. However, I'm not going to be making a whole video on Lost in London. I'm not even going to be talking about it at all, really, because Daniel Radcliffe was in two minutes of that film at the end and he wasn't part of the actual film like there's the acting part of the film and then there's the two minutes at the end where Daniel Radcliffe talks about the story that inspired the movie 
and so he's not really an actor in the movie. So I'm not going to be talking about that in its own video, but Lost in London was an insane film based on the way that it was filmed, but I wouldn't consider it a Daniel Radcliffe film despite online saying that he's in it because he just has a two minute section at the end. But anyways, all of my other Daniel Radcliffe videos will be linked in a little playlist. It will be linked down in the description below, or maybe I'll put it somewhere on the screen. I don't know. I hope all of you have a fantastic week, and I will see all of you in my next video. Goodbye!